to Kansas, gateway to Oz. Under the rainbow, this is where it was. Hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes, and churn homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. It's the best part of Dorothy's dream. Today Around Kansas shares the history of the Pawnee Rock State Historical Site, a landmark along the Santa Fe Trail. And next we learn about the upcoming 135th Messiah Festival of the Arts in Lindsburg. Then enjoy a poem from Ron Wilson titled Livestock Trailers. And we'll end with a look at the ever-changing, ever-temperamental weather in Kansas. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment is brought to you by Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. Just a short drive down the Yellow Brick Road. Well, good Wednesday morning. I'm Frank. I'm Deb. And this is Around Kansas. And today, of course, we're in the Dillon House. That's where we do these each week. And you can see a nice long shot. We're in this big room today. And we're looking at faces in the window up here. Not real faces, but these are authors that uh, uh, the Dillons happen to like. Is that Edgar this, Allan Poe up there? Is that I that think is? that is. Yes, I believe it, it is. is. <laughs> yeah. We have Poe looking down on us this morning. So anyway, I think this must have been the study because there are bookcases and fireplaces and everything else. Dillon House, by the way, is right across from the state capitol in Topeka, and it is available for all kinds of events and all that. And when you're in Topeka, uh, come in and take a tour. It's a beautiful place. And if you're lobbying the legislators, this is a perfect place to, <laughs> to woo them over to your way of thinking, yes. isn't it, Frank? Yes, it is. I, so. I would feel very special if somebody had a party for me right here. So, <laughs> yeah, it would so, be a great anyway. place. So, uh, books, books, books. We're, uh, we're in a library, so let's talk about books. You have uh, a person that I'm, you know? I have, uh, of course, a lot of friends who are authors. And a lot of you probably know my friend Ron Smith, uh, a lawyer out in Larned. So he's a Larned lawyer. <laughs> and maybe a learned Larned lawyer. Oh, okay. So, I thought you said logger, and I thought, <laughs> a logger in West... No, okay, no, go ahead. No, no loggers out there. <laughs> okay. But Ron has written a book. It's a novel of the Civil War called The Wastage. And he actually sent me a review copy um, before it was published. And he is wonderful writer and it's wonderful for me as a historian to see characters you know brought to life mm. and the conversations and just to see these people have the breath of life in them and and Ron has done that with this book and it's available on Amazon and uh, Barnes and Noble online you know all those places so be sure and check that out and if Ron is speaking in your neck of the woods uh, maybe we can share that on Facebook or whatever so so you'll be sure to, to catch him. Hmm. Very good. He wrote a, a history of um, Thomas Ewing. And Thomas Ewing, another, he was a Leavenworth lawyer. Thomas Ewing was the foster brother and brother-in-law of William Tecumseh Sherman. And they had a law practice together in Leavenworth. And they had a, um, um, they were speculating in land, as everybody was <laughs> yeah. in Bleeding when, Kansas. You know, everybody's speculating in land. So that's a fantastic history and covers some really interesting Kansas Kansas connections. So, yeah, hmm. that's another book I highly recommend. <laughs> so your latest book is? I'm still working on Charles Curtis. Ah, still okay. working on that. But that's going to be a biggie. Okay. So that's going to take a while. I'm, I'm trying to get a little short thing out, but the big one on Charles Curtis, I want to do a... I want to do a real biography, you know, a, a really detailed biography, and and that that takes real work, Frank. You know? <laughs> yeah. There's a catch to everything, you know it. Oh, so yeah. It takes real work. I wouldn't know. I I write thirty and sixty second commercials, so a whole book is a real challenge. Well, for me. I'm telling you, uh, the real challenge is distilling something into thirty seconds or a minute or fifteen seconds that is meaningful. That's very hard. And, you know, most writers, you know, you've got to eliminate a few words. Yeah. Stay with us. We've got a great show. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. 
Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Support Kansas Agriculture Education with an AgriTag. AgriTags are available anytime at your county treasurer. They look great on cars and trucks. For more information, go online to ksagclassroom.org. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine. Your stem cells, your health, your life. And we're back. So, anyway, you know, we did a... We did a story here some weeks ago on a place called Teeter Rock, which is really about the only thing left of, of a mining town down in southeast Kansas that was called Teeter. And so the Teeter Rock is still there. So anyway, you have a story about another rock in Kansas? We got rocks. <laughs> <laughs> we do we, have a lot of rocks. We got rocks. We do. We got some really cool rocks, too. And Pawnee Rock, um, you know, one of those landmarks in the in the state and um, along the Santa Fe Trail. So it's a, a historic site, it's uh, beautiful. You know, there's so many places in Frank, as you and I well know, that, that are beautiful. And that misnomer that Kansas is flat, you know, I don't know where that came from because you will have these just like tabletop landscapes and then the change is dramatic. Oh yeah. You know, you'll you'll get a bluff, or you'll get the breaks, or you'll get um, the Flint Hills, where you get that that just roll of the land. And um, as you're traveling around the state, just get off the main road. You know, <laughs> get off the main road for just a mile or two, and I guarantee you're going to be surprised. Yeah. If you're a motorcycle rider, do it sometime. Do the four corners of Kansas, and you will be totally amazed at the the change in geography topography the whole thing it, it's it's fantastic uh, i did it in 72 hours once so slow down and take your time seriously and yes yes that 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 was a whole challenge that a bunch of us did and uh anyway we'll talk about that sometime do it on horseback <laughs> but not in 72 hours yeah let's take a look at pawnee rock it's a landmark along the santa fe trail in fact it was a landmark for the plains tribes long before there even was a Santa Fe Trail. Comanche, Kiowa, Arapaho, Cheyenne, and Pawnee tribes held their councils of war and peace. Many Indian battles were fought nearby in the days before the white man came to Kansas. Many of the Plains tribes reportedly used it as an observation point from which they could watch buffalo herds and wagon trains. For pioneers, it marked the halfway point between Missouri and Santa Fe, in 1848, James Birch, a soldier on his way to the Mexican War, wrote, Pawnee Rock was covered with names carved by the men who had passed it. It was so full I could find no place for mine. Many stories have been told to explain how Pawnee Rock got its name. One source for the name comes from the belief that it was sacred ground for the Pawnee Indians who held tribal councils on its flat top. Another from a great battle in which a small band of Pawnees were destroyed by a force of Kiowas, Cheyennes, and Arapahoes. Both come from Pawnee lore. Among the Plainsmen, it is said that the rock got its name in 1826. Kit Carson was on his first trip west and only 17. He was working his passage on a wagon train which passed near the rock. While on guard duty, he shot his own mule, thinking it was an attacking Pawnee. His associates commemorated his experience with the name Pawnee Rock. Much of Pawnee Rock was destroyed in the 1870s by the railroad and by settlers for building stone. The remnant was acquired in 1908 by the Woman's Kansas Day Club. In 1909, it was given to the state of Kansas as an historic site. In 1912, a state monument was dedicated amidst a crowd of 8,000 onlookers. 
Pawnee Rock was listed in the National Register of Historic Places in 1970 and today operates as Pawnee Rock State Historic Site. Lecompton. The name was splashed across newspapers throughout America and Europe. It was debated in the halls of Congress. Lecompton interprets its unique territorial history with two museums and other sites. Events throughout the year celebrate history and community. The 160th anniversary of the Battle of Fort Titus, June 18th, 2 p.m. Reenactors welcome. Call 785-887-6148 for more information. Spend the day in historic Lecompton, shopping, eating, savoring the rich history. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. A high-energy, drought-tolerant crop, sorghum only requires six inches of water to produce the first bushel. And with its wide uses and easy adaptation, sorghum proves to be a truly indispensable crop. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. This segment brought to you by Kansas Grain Sorghum, growers working together. Find out more at kansasgrainsorghum.org. Welcome back, folks, and Frank is going to take us to Lindsborg, one of our favorite places in yeah. Kansas. If, you've never, <laughs> if you have never been to Lindsborg, and I can't imagine who, who hasn't, but um, that whole town is an experience. Mm -hmm. The whole town, the food, the, the museums, the shops, the entire town is just an experience. It is. I mean, it, it's uh, little Sweden mm -hmm. is, is what it is. Uh, there's a lot of food. There's uh, something always going on there and a lot of arts and music and everything else. So it's, it's an incredible place. It's an incredible place and it's so pretty. And um, I know Heather and I got to go out. I don't know how time flies. Could have been last month, it could have been <laughs> 10 years ago. But we stayed at the hotel there with our kids. And um, it was a wonderful experience. It was truly like being in Europe. Staying, mm. If you get the chance, do take the opportunity to spend the night in the hotel. Oh, yeah. Because that, that just, you know, waking up there and it's a, like a European breakfast <laughs> and, and just the whole feel of it. Is, is so nice, yeah. so nice. Well, and there's a great opportunity coming up, which I'm going to talk about, and that is the, uh, the 135th performance of uh, Handel's Messiah. Uh, I, but the whole thing is, is, well, there's a whole story about it, so I'm not going to give it away now. But the thing is, is uh, if you can this year, there's still time, uh, make plans to go and see uh, the music and the art that is presented around this Easter season in Lindsburg, Kansas. And do take time. You know, if you can plan more than just showing up, like we said, for the performance, take the time to experience everything the town has to offer. And and um, the hotel may be booked up by now, <laughs> but, um, you know, stay in the area, um, spend some real time there, because um, there's uh, not far away, you've got Coronado Heights, so mm -hmm. you could you could go visit Coronado Heights while you're there and take a, a hike to work off some of the rich food that you're going to have <laughs> while you're in Lindsborg. So it's just the total experience. Yeah. The whole thing is a total experience. So let's hear about uh, Easter week in Lindsborg. The theme of the 135th Messiah Festival of the Arts is Imagine and will feature a wide variety of art, music, and theatrical events during the 10-day event beginning March 18th and continuing through Easter Sunday, March 27th. The festival will kick off on Palm Sunday weekend with the opening of the juried student art exhibit in the Mingenbach Gallery and production of Lucas Nath's play, The Christians, in the Burnett Center both on the Bethany campus. The Christians was described by the New York Times as a white knuckle drama about a theological battle, a deeply affecting new play. The Christians will be performed Friday, March 18th through Saturday, March 19th at 7.30 p.m. Tickets are $15 at the door. On Palm Sunday, 
the Bethany Oratorio Society will present a musical tribute to Dr. Walter J. Pels. Dr. Pels is a renowned Lindsberg musician and has been honored for his contributions as a composer and church organist. He was a Bethany music professor for 30 years, beginning his career at the college in 1969. He has composed several hundred works that are included in hymnals and featured on many recordings. He was most recently honored by the Association of Lutheran Church Musicians at its national convention in uh, 2015. The Bethany Oratorio Society will perform its historic and rich performance of, of J.S. Bach's Passion according to St. Matthew on Good Friday, March 25th and G.F. Handel's Messiah on Easter Sunday, March 27th. The Bethany Oratorio Society has been performing Handel's Messiah continuously since 1882 and Bach's Passion since 1929. During Holy Week each year in Lindsberg, the more than 300 member community chorus and orchestra are joined by professional operatic guest soloists for the performances. Guest soloists this year include Anders Jacobs, bass, Allison Collins, soprano, Clea Houston, mezzo, Randolph Lacey, tenor, Leslie John Flanagan, bass, and Brian Strangeowner, tenor. Full biographies of each soloist can be found on the Messiah website at messiahfestival.org. Tickets are $22 or $25 for each concert and are now on sale. They can be purchased online at messiahfestival.org or by calling the Messiah Festival office. Additional events in the Messiah Festival schedule include the fourth annual art installation displays in downtown Lindsberg, the Midwest Art Exhibit at the Berger Stanzen Gallery, symphonic band concert, and student honors recital. A full list of activities and performances can be found online. Hallelujah! Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. Around Kansas, brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook, or visit us online at sftmeats.com. One of the key pieces of equipment which a cowboy uses in modern times is the livestock trailer. This poem is a tribute to the livestock trailer. I wrote this poem on the back of a sale barn receipt while I was sitting in line at the sale barn getting ready to unload cattle. It's called Hitch Me Up. There are red ones and blue ones, silver and gray. Some are splattered with manure, some leaking hay. Some are dark or muddy, some are clean or white. There's Titans and Travelong, Sooner and Featherlight. There's Trailman and Roughneck, CM and Diamond C, and some of them look downright homemade to me. Most have gooseneck attachments, but some are bumper pull. Some have a big dent from carrying a bull. Some are riding low from carrying heavy loads. Some look like they've banged down too many gravel roads. Some need a paint job. Some are coated with dust. Some look like antiques that are nothing but rust. They're used to haul cattle or horses or hay, and they're parked at the sale barn during sale day. They're going to and from pasture at different times of the year. During county fair, they're hauling in the show steer. There might even be a time in your child's search for knowledge that the trailer's cleaned up to haul the kids' stuff to college. So we salute the livestock trailer. In fact, we might say that it's a vital support for the cowboy. It's behind him all the way. Happy trailer. I'm a patient of Kansas Regenerative Medicine in Manhattan. I had uh, stem cell therapy in my hips and my left knee. My wife and I uh, both are patients. We went down there the same day in November. Since then, uh, my hips are feeling a lot better. I can, can work now most of the day if I want to. And uh, before, if I, if I worked in the morning, I was done in the afternoon. Or if I worked in the afternoon, um, I was sure enough done for the rest of the day. 
Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Around Kansas, brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. Go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. And we're back again. Uh, you know, we talked about the topography and geography uh, in Kansas being quite diverse and all of that. But uh, you wanted to say something about the weather. You know, it's really funny, um, not funny, but um, unusual and strange. Um, this spring has been so volatile all over the United States and back home where I grew up in Ararat, Virginia, where we had never even heard of tornadoes. That was as foreign as a tidal wave. Um, there were tornadoes this spring already. And Kansas averages 50 tornadoes a year, folks. But back um, where I grew up, it's a really rare thing. So um, it's, a, it's just one of those phenomenon of our weather in Kansas, which is arguably the most spectacular in the country. Wouldn't you agree, Frank? Yeah. Does anybody, can anybody match the variety of weather that we have in Kansas? <laughs> well, that's what they say. You know, you see the four seasons and thing is, they say, well, that's a day in Kansas. That's a day. That's a day. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And sometimes it's lunch break, you know. It's <laughs> yeah. just, it can be, it can be absolutely crazy. But it also makes life really interesting, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Especially when you're living with it. Well, every day. just like today, as we're <laughs> filming this, the clouds keep running past the window here, which keeps changing the light. So if we keep looking rather more weird than usual, that's probably because the clouds keep covering the sun, uncovering. Right. So. It's, it's not our meds kicking in and out, you know, that's not it. It's just, it's just the cloud cover driving poor Michael crazy. <laughs> if you don't like the weather in Kansas, just wait five minutes. It will change. There are two seasons in Kansas, winter and road construction. Those of us who have seen temperatures drop 40 or 50 degrees in a couple of hours or seen blizzards shut down I-70 know that the old jokes aren't jokes at all, but facts. Experts say the climate of Kansas can be characterized in terms of three types, humid continental, semi-arid steppe, and humid subtropical. The eastern two-thirds of the state, especially the northeastern portion, has a humid continental climate with cool to cold winters and hot, humid summers. The western third of the state, from roughly Route 281 westward, has a semi-arid steppe climate. Summers are very hot and less humid. Winters are highly changeable. The western region receives an average of about 16 inches of precipitation a year. Chinook winds in the winter can warm western Kansas all the way to 80 degrees. The far south-central and southeastern reaches of the state have a humid subtropical climate with hot, humid summers, milder winters, and more precipitation than elsewhere. However, some features of all three climates can be found in most of the state, Droughts, floods, heat, cold, thunderstorms, and blizzards. Precipitation ranges from about 47 inches a year in the southeast to about 16 inches in the southwest. Snowfall varies from around 5 inches in the south to 35 inches in the far northwest. There are more than 200 days without frost in the south, but only 130 in the northwest. Thus, Kansas is the ninth or tenth sunniest state in the country. Western Kansas is as sunny as California. Kansas is prone to severe weather, especially in the spring and early summer. Its location at a climatic boundary makes it vulnerable to strong and severe thunderstorms. Official reports indicate that the all-time highest temperature recorded in Kansas was 121 degrees in July 1936 near Alton. The all-time low, minus 40 in February 1905 near Lebanon. Kansas' record high of 121 ties with North Dakota for the fifth 
highest record high in the United States. The good news is weather can be experienced in any corner of the state and there is no admission charged. In fact, we should put up signs at the state boundaries proclaiming Kansas Open Air Weather Museum. Well, we have to get out of here again this week. So I'm Frank. I'm Deb. And we'll see you somewhere around, around Kansas. Kansas. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. We're the best part of Dorothy's dream. We're the best part of Dorothy's dream. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com.